Welcome to everyone just starting to come into the webinar now. We'll, we'll give it a minute just to allow everyone to come in to the webinar and then we'll get started. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Are you looking at integrating with NYOP? A few more people just coming in now. So far, I'm with the NOP and you guys have to go as well. But um, I think I'm really connecting and connect to that here. Uh, have you ever seen this story again? Yes. Perfect. All right. Why don't we get started and then we can. See if there's a few more people coming in. I can see in the chat. No, so we can't see you. Um, you can only see us for this webinar, unfortunately. Um, but we are very, very excited um, for this webinar today. We are talking about Superhero Super. Uh, and not only that, we have the expert Blair from BetaShares here to talk about some of the investment options, um, particularly in ETFs that uh, you can invest in with Superhero Super. So yeah, feel free to jump into the chat, say hello, let us know where you're from. We're very excited to have our co-founder and CEO, John Winter here as well with us today to talk all about the journey to superhero super and why he's so passionate about really disrupting the super industry and, and giving back control and transparency uh, to, to Aussies, um, which are us. We've got people from all over the country. We've got Melbourne, Sydney, Central Coast, Wow, very excited to have you all. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping and then I'll, I'll go away and um, let the guys get on with it. But use the Q&A function um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar. And I'll hope to answer a few of them throughout the webinar. John and Blair will also be able to answer a few throughout the webinar as well. So if there is a particular question you have as a slide comes up, feel free to pop it in the Q&A function specifically and we'll be able to get those answered. But we will also have 15 minutes at the end of the webinar for a live Q&A. Um, so I'll, I'll go off video um, until then and then I'll pop back on and we'll be able to have some live Q&A at the end. Uh, so without further ado, I'll hand it over to John um, to tell us all about Superhero Super. Fantastic. Thanks, Rach. Thanks for the great introduction, as always. Um, really excited to be here today talking about Superhero Super. We've been working on, on bringing this product to market for, for almost three and a half years now, and I'm really excited to, uh, to launch it just a couple of weeks ago. Um, great to have Blair on from BetaShares as well. BetaShares does uh, feature quite heavily on our superannuation product. And uh, yeah, the, the, the great products that, that uh, the guys have over there and, and um, have, have shown some really great performance over the last, over the last few, few years really. Um, and, and particularly with the rise of, of ETF investing in Australia. So, so I, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna uh, jump into to a short presentation that will, will take you through the, the superhero super product. Um, uh, but first of all, over to Blair, just to, just great, great to get a little introduction of yourself and uh, what you do at BetaShares and, and uh, how you see the, um, uh, I guess, the broader market. Yeah, absolutely, John. First of all, thank you very much for having us today. It's, um, it's really exciting to be a part of the superhero journey. I think you know, BetaShares and superhero are aligned in the sense that we're looking to, uh, to make the market fairer for people to be able to invest and, and really deliver quality a quality investment piece uh, to, to the market so that um, so people can access, you know, uh, funds management in a, a cost effective, but also quality way. So thank you to you, John and Rachel for having us today. Um, in terms of beta shares, I'll get stuck into that in a minute. Uh, my name's Blair Modica, as you said, John, I'm a director of advisor business at beta shares. Essentially, my role is going out to stockbrokers, advisors, um, you know, family offices, people that uh, look to allocate money into ETFs day to day. Um, and have a conversation around how that might fit um, and what, what sort of things are resonating in the market. And really today, we'll get stuck into a little bit of that with some of the offerings that are on Superhero um, and, and hopefully have a bit of a, a discussion around what, I guess, investors are looking for, what you guys out there are looking for and, um, and how we can help. 
fantastic. And and what I always what I always sort of see as a big as a big question that we get from people is you know what to invest in. It's that it's that getting started piece. You know what what should they invest in and. And we can go into that in a little bit more detail, but also point out some of the um, some of the learnings and the research that we found from our trading business, where we, we've got uh, creeping up to the hundred thousand mark um, today. Um, we've taken some of those learnings across to the super space, and we'll go through some of those investment opportunities as well. So just a just a quick little bit more housekeeping. We don't we don't provide uh, personal financial advice here. Um, anything that you see in this or hear in this web uh, webinar is is um, only only to be considered as general advice. We are not taking into account your personal circumstances. Uh, also, past performance is not an indicative of future performance either. And and any of the charts and graphs really are just for illustrative purposes only, and shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be taken as as advice. Um, so quick overview of what, what we'll go through today. Uh, Blair will give you a bit more of an introduction into beta shares, some of the ETFs, the landscape, the market, um, and I guess the opportunity around, around ETFs. Um, I can do a little bit more of a deep dive into, into the superannuation product, Superhero Super, uh, and, and what you can do with it and how it can, how it can uh, uh, you know, help you um, build, build your wealth. Um, we'll then jump into some of the investment themes and, and some of the, um, the portfolios that we've set up on the super product and we can do a little bit more of a deep dive into what those products are, what those ETFs are, the exposure that you get and, and you, know, what, what, um, you know, what that can do for you as well. And then we'll flick over to you guys. If you've got any questions, we can, um, we, we can throw, throw the floor open to you. So jumping straight in, Blair, tell us a little bit about beta shares yeah let's do it so i guess to start off i mean just to be really high level in terms of what an etf is it's an exchange traded fund um, and what that means for people that don't know is essentially it's a basket of individual stocks put together in index form or in in a packet basically traded on the stock exchange that you can go out and access the same way that you'd buy a, a stock or security through your broker or indeed through superhero um, and, and again, just before we get into beta shares, I guess it's a, a really good idea just to show where the market's at for ETFs, where, where the money's coming from. And certainly we've got $100 billion um, under management in the ETF space in Australia now. So we passed that milestone in March of this year. And really over the, the 2020 COVID pandemic, we've seen a massive increase in, in use and trading of ETF securities. The market was at around 50 billion at the start of last year and has really increased very quickly to, to that 100 billion mark. Um, so you can see there, 9 trillion invested in exchange traded funds globally. And I think the really interesting thing about that is obviously the United States is a big market and has been the, the sort of first comer in terms of ETF adoption. Um, but Australia is really growing faster than anywhere else in the world with respect to ETF uptake. So we're seeing about a 46% compound growth rate in terms of funds under management within this, the industry in Australia at this point in time. And if you compare that to elsewhere in the world, and in particular America, they're, they're sitting at around 15 to 20%. So we are fast adopters. We're, we're really taking to the ETF platform. Um, and I think as Australians, we're definitely given we're so far away from, I guess, other people and also other companies, we're really interested in investing in them. And really, BetaShares is looking to give you that opportunity. You it can really see there as well there. an 80% increase uh, in the last 12 months in terms of the value of Australia's ETF sector. So as I said, we're around, around 50 billion at the start of last year and, and have seen an 80% increase over the last 12 months, which is, uh, which is really, really exciting. I guess one for, for an ETF provider, but also just providing... Um, investments that, that have been difficult to access um, throughout history um, into a more easier format. It really, it really um, you know, talks to that accessibility piece, doesn't it? Uh, being able to invest in a broad index or a, or a basket of shares through a single security at a very low cost. Um, it, it's no wonder that, that ETFs are seeing such huge uptake and growth as a, as a sector as a whole. You're spot on, John, um, and I think you'll see more and more of it as we um, as we go into the future with with different investment ideas and certainly cost pressures coming in as well. To to where you know we get to the states and um, you know there's very very cheap exposures to to quality investments. Yeah. And if you if you want me to jump in in terms of who are beta shares, um, it's probably a good question. I'm not sure how many of your 
your market really understand or, or know who we are. So I'm more than happy to cover off on that. And, and really, BetaShares was formed in 2008. And we're the only Australian founded and managed ETF provider. And I think that's important for a couple of reasons without wanting to sound corny. Um, the first being because all of our funds are Australian domicile, there's no need to uh, use W8 Ben forms or any type of paperwork when you're investing. Um, and the other one is because our, our product management team is based in Sydney, we're not badging any sort of strategies that have worked overseas and, and hoping that it flies in Australia. Everything's designed with... Um, with the Australian practitioner indeed, and, and indeed the uh, the end investor in mind. And, and with that, the products are, are created with, you know, the implications for an Australian investor. So I think that's really important. Uh, we're sitting at almost 20 billion in terms of funds under management and 63 different funds in the marketplace. So whether that's Aussie equities, international equities, uh, cash commodities, fixed income, we do have something we feel for everyone. Um, and really it's been an interesting evolution in the sense of the ETF space itself. People are probably most familiar with an ETF as being an index tracking investment, whether that's the NASDAQ 100 or the ASX 200, but it has grown from there. You know, ETF 1.0 was that index type of investment, 2.0 being smart beta or, or rules-based strategies. And now we're re really seeing a foray into to active management and bringing that online into the, uh, into the ETF piece. So, I think um, you know it's it's well placed to be able to offer a quality investment with inside an inside an ETF structure. Yeah, look, I think a, a lot of our a lot of our customers would know Beta Shares. Certainly, certainly very popular. Uh, your ETFs, Nasdaq 100 Asia, has been very popular. Sustainability ETFs have been very popular as well. And I think it you know it is that Australian piece. It is that you know you are here on the ground. Um, you know, doing webinars. You know, talking to people. Um, and being in the market. Also, the, the investments that you've got, you know, they really resonate. You know, people do want exposure to US, to US shares, but a, a lot of, and, and Superhero offers direct access to, to US shares as well. But a lot of the time, what we see is people, people sort of get decision paralysis. You know, there's four and a half thousand different US shares you can invest in, um, not in the super product, and we'll go through that in a little bit, but, but it is that exposure that people want and being able to access, you know, the NASDAQ, top 100 shares on the NASDAQ is, um, is certainly uh, very attractive and we've seen a huge amount of uptake. So definitely love what you guys are doing. I think the feelings likewise there. I think um, the super product's really exciting, just being able to, to give everyday Australians access to um, a, a different piece that maybe wasn't available previously. Yeah. So jumping, th thanks for that overview. It's, it's super interesting to, to hear the, the background of, of beta shares and where you guys have come from in, in pretty quick quick uh, time as well. Um, jumping jumping over to Superhero Super, the Super product was actually and going back a little bit as well. The Super product was our was our you know that was our business. We 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 started Superhero to be a superannuation company um, with the the view of making Super transparent. So we believe that people should be able to see what you are invested in. Uh, there's, there's government um, legislation at the moment that says super funds don't need to disclose what their underlying investments are. Um, so we think that transparency is a major piece to super. This is money that you are saving for your retirement and you should be able to see exactly what you are invested in. But taking one step further, we think that you should have the control to decide and, and you've got the control to use that, that, that as well, but to, to decide where you want your super invested. So you don't have to use that control, but you've got the option to use that control to invest in, in a range of ETFs uh, as well as ASX 300 listed shares. So, so going back to, to, to 2018, we, we set off to, to build a superannuation fund that allowed you to invest in direct shares and ETFs, know exactly where your super was invested, have full transparency, low fees, um, and it's taken the best part of you know, three and a half years to get the product up and running in the market. Um, what, what it is, is it's an APRA regulated public offer super fund. Uh, it, is, it is the same legal structure as what you see with, with um, you know, industry or retail funds um, in, in terms of the, the structure. So, so we're able to accept employer contributions. We're able to accept rollovers from other funds. Um, we, we've seen a number of people move their, their self-managed super funds into Superhero Super as well to really access the, the flexibility, control, and the, um, and the transparency that, that comes with it. 
To go into a little bit more detail around Superhero Super, it, it is a way for you to invest your super the way you want to. Um, and we've set up, to do that, we've set up two, two different account types. Mindful that some people may want full control. They want to invest in individual shares. Some people may want to automate their investments into a, into a set portfolio. Um, so we've got autopilot and we've got control. The autopilot account, I think we may go into it on the next page. I'll go into it. I'll go into it in, in a little bit. But, but what it is, there's no setup fees. There's no SMSF required. There's no self-managed super fund required. Um, you can access life and TPD insurance through the, through the fund as well. And you've got full transparency on, on what the fees are, how much you're getting charged, on what you're invested in uh, every step of the way. Um, and, and it's the same user experience that people have, have come to know and love on Superhero. So diving into those account types, um, we've, got, we've got Autopilot. And we've set this up for people who want that transparency, who want, it, who want some control but they don't want to have to make the day-to-day the, the day -day or month-to-month -month decisions on how, the, on how their super is invested. So what, we, what we've offered here is a low-cost way to access a broad, diversified global portfolio um, and, and then allocate up to 30% of your, of your investments into different themed portfolios. So you'll see there on, on the screen, US tech giants, and if you press the I button, it's full transparency and look through. It is the NASDAQ, it's the beta shares, NASDAQ 100 ETF that sits behind that. So you can select how you want your super invested. On this screen, it shows 10% of your contributions every month will be invested in that ETF. Uh, there's global sustainability, there's global health, uh, there's Asia, which is the Asia Tech Tigers, gold and high interest cash. So three or four different... Um, Beta shares ETF sitting sitting there, um, and really attracted to the to the past performance. I guess that the index that they track as well is is also um, you know very very thematic um, and, and certainly where the world is going. Um, but then as your as your super is rolled over, it'll be automatically invested based on your selection, and future contributions will also be invested into those contributions uh, into those contribution settings. The next step up is, is the control account. Uh, and this is the one that you, you, you can choose how much of your super you want um, split between that global diversified index portfolio. That portfolio really ensures there is a level of diversification in your, in, in your super. This is long-term investing. Um, so we want that, that level of diversification. And then you can put up to 75% into your wallet. So your wallet is, is similar to what you've got on, on Superhero. If you've got a trading account, it's the cash account that you can use to invest. Um, and, and that is where you can then invest in ASX 300 shares in a range of ETFs. There's about 150 different ETFs. Uh, most of beta shares ETFs are on there. Um, the, and, and, then, and then your contributions will be split um, between that, that setting, uh, whether it's 25, 75% to your wallet uh, for future contributions. Um, what we've also done, because this is your super, because this is it is important, um, and we are giving you a huge amount of control. We've brought in we've brought in um, a responsible investing layer, if you like, um, and that that provides limits on the amount that you can invest. So while while it would have been a fantastic investment over the last few years, you can't go and put 100% of your super into Afterpay. There are limits on individual shares. There's limits on individual ETFs. And that really is to force a level of diversification. Um, so we want people to have control, but we need people to use it in a responsible way. And this is, this is really a, a way that we've been able to really sort of bridge that gap between responsible investing and, and taking out that, that full level of control um, in, in a controlled environment. So the cost, the cost of, the port, of the accounts we charge 0.49% per annum, um, and and depending on whether you're in an autopilot or control account, it costs between one and two dollars a week. So, if you wanted to join Superhero, the the process is is pretty pretty easy. Um, you can you can register for a trading account on our website. So you can set up an individual account. 
Superhero Super is for individuals only. You can't sign up to a super account using a company or, or, or a joint account. Um, it is for individuals only. Um, you, you can then add a super account um, and you'll go through a number of steps. So what, what we've been able to do is, is you obviously choose, your, choose your, your investments and how you would like your contributions to be split. But we've got a line directly into the ATO. So you can put your tax file number in we're able to search for your superannuation funds at the ATO and you can, you can decide whether you want to consolidate your super account. So you may, have, you may have one or two or five different super accounts, some that you may not have even known about. You can select those and, and transfer them directly to Superhero. It usually takes about three days for your funds to come across, um, but it does transfer them out of your existing fund across to Superhero. Um, you can also do a partial transfer if you only wanted to move some of your super. Um, and, and the other way to transfer your, your money in is once you've gone through this setup process, you can then log into MyGov, your MyGov account, and your Superhero Super account will show up in your MyGov account, and you can then transfer from there. So you, you will see it when, when you log in. So we do, have, we do have a direct line into the ATO. Your, super, your superhero super account will be registered with the ATO as would any other superannuation fund that you are a member of. Once your funds come across, you then have the ability to, to invest. If you're in a control account, you can invest in a range of ETFs or direct shares, or you can change your contribution settings, how you want future contributions to be invested. And the same goes for autopilot. Once your, your funds come in, you will own the, the range of different investments that you've selected. Uh, but you can make changes to those in the future as you wish. So maybe let's jump into some of the some of the different investments. Um, and these these do exist across both the the autopilot and control account, and very popular among our customer base. But jumping into the U.S. tech giants uh, theme that we've called it is the Beta Shares Nasdaq 100 ETF um, that you're invested in, um, and maybe. Maybe over to you, Blair, just to give a bit of an overview about, about the ETF itself, but also, I guess, the thematic um, uh, you know, investment opportunity that, that comes with it. Yeah, absolutely, John. I think um, that, that's probably a good way to start. I mean, the NASDAQ 100 has been very popular for us, obviously playing on that tech thematic that um, you know, comes with investing in the, the top 100 companies listed on the NASDAQ. Um, and that actually excludes financials within the NASDAQ listing. So you do get a more pure play exposure towards technology. But I guess the question then becomes, what are the major, uh, major trends favouring technology at this point in time? And, and why is something like the NASDAQ 100 attractive from that point of view? Um, and look, if, if we look at some of the current online trends at the moment, cybersecurity is a big one. So you've got um, a, a massive amount of malware and um, I guess, hacking um, issues going on around the world at, at, at different levels. So whether it's the government, whether it's at business level and, and you know, fending away hacking attacks or, or certainly uh, with respect to individuals and, and being hacked from an individual account point of view, it's something we need to be aware of. And there's definitely companies doing big things within that space that are very profitable. Um, another trend is economic transactions. So if, if you're looking at the way we go about our day-to-day -day business and, and, and commerce, it really is the story of e-commerce at this point in time, where we're using um, applications online to buy our goods and services and have it delivered to our front door. And I think that's going to be a massive trend going forward. Um, you know, socialising and catching up with friends is another one that's um, is, is really, you know, since I've sort of been through university and started working, changed dramatically. I mean, we, we look to go to Facebook or Instagram to, to catch up with people or organise a catch up and, and certainly chat with them through those functions. Um, Advertising is another huge one. I mean, I don't know how many times I've spoken about buying some sunglasses or, um, or bed sheeting and um, it seems like my phone's listening to me and all of a sudden up pops an advertising um, account saying, you know, buy some sunglasses from this brand. So that's another thing that's big business with respect to, you know, trends favouring technology. Um, the cloud's another big one that I think is well represented within the NASDAQ 100, you know, companies like Amazon, like, um, like Google that uh, have, you know, cloud storage ability. Netflix is another big one where we're, we're paying a software as a service fee to, um, to, to basically access movies. Um, very, very big business there. 
and indeed media consumption. So that Netflix play as well is something that, um, you know, is encapsulated by the NASDAQ 100. You've got those FANG securities, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, that, um, you know, are incorporated as a part of the exposure. I think the really interesting thing from that point of view is, yes, you've got an exposure to those companies that we all know, we all can go out and touch. We've got an Apple iPhone, we've got a Google phone, we use Netflix. There's also a lot of companies in there that we probably haven't heard of, you know, something like a Splunk, which is a cybersecurity business, um, and many, many others, you know, NVIDIA, artificial intelligence and robotics that are the future in terms of the way we're going to go about one, e-commerce and business, but also just our daily lives. And I think, you know, investing in the top 100 in the world through NASDAQ is a really exciting opportunity. Yeah, and one of the things that we say here is that, you know, when people are looking to invest sometimes for the first time is that, you know, they're, they're not sure what to invest in. And when you take a step back, there's so many things that we are invested in in our everyday life. You know, and you mentioned a number of them, you know, getting parcels delivered to your door. Um, you know, the number of people who have actually used Amazon in Australia, it's, it's well into the millions. Um, Facebook, you know, the advertising, um, you know, the advertising, whether the phone is listening to us or not. It's always the, um, it's the million dollar question, but having exposure to that investment opportunity is, is what you can get through these sorts of companies without having to identify every, every one of those underlying businesses. You're right. And I mean, the, the interesting thing about that is, and I mean, it's, it's really relevant for the Asia tech titans or, or tech giants as well, is that really we're, we're all living our lives more and more online. I mean, if we went back 10 years, it was probably, or say even, even 15 years, it's probably a quarter or, or, um, or so of the population that are online. That's up now near 50%. And with that, we're also, um, I guess the adoption curve is really starting to change as well. And we, you know, we often run out of presentation with a slide where, you know, back in the 1800s, it took about 40 years for 25% um, of the population to adopt the dishwasher as a new technology. And if we fast forward to today with laptops um, in general, but then even more so with smartphones, it's taking something like three or four or five years to get that 20%, 25% adoption curve. And I think from that point of view, you know, technology as a thematic to invest in is really, really interesting. Yeah, so jumping into the, oh, I'll just go back there one second. Jumping into the, the Asia Tech Tigers, this is also a very popular mm -hmm. ETF on, on our trading business and, and part of the, um, the autopilot uh, portfolio makeup as well. The performance of some of these companies and, and the NASDAQ 100 as well has been has been huge over the yep. last, particularly the last 12 months. It's been a, a, a very, um, you know, high growth market that we've been in. Um, but, but longer term, they've been, they've been huge as well. And, um, you know, looking at some of the underlying companies, what is it that, what is it that's driving this growth? Yeah, well, I think, look, if we, if we talk about Asia Technology Tigers in, in, in general, what's driving the growth is a, an upwardly mobile middle class um, and, and many, many billions, so to speak, of them going online and, um, and doing their e-commerce online um, and interacting with each other online. So, I mean, if you look at some of the companies within Asia, um, you know, Tencent, which, um, you know, is a, a massive conglomerate with um, a multifaceted approach to the way they do business, but a really big part of the way they operate is in online gaming. Um, so again, I guess tapping into that, you know, upwardly mobile middle class, it's got more and more money. Um, and, and, and what do they do with it? They probably go out and buy games or, or they go out and, um, and order their food and, um, and furniture online and get it delivered to their door. So it's all, all these types of trends that, that basically the overarching trend is everyone's going online. And within Asia, I mean, you know, China makes up 50% of this portfolio. And you, you know, in, in China, there's over a billion people, but there's also exposure into India, again, with over a billion people um, and Southeast Asia as well. So you've got a large population that's an emerging middle class. And I think, you know, when you think about the Asia um, exposure, it, it definitely is an emerging market and it's playing in the best space within emerging markets, which is technology. Yeah, no, it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating portfolio. Only 50 stocks. Um, they are the biggest in in Asia, um, but seeing you know Alibaba up there as as the biggest holding, um, you know they are sort of the Asian version of of Amazon, um, Samsung. The um, you know the adoption of their of the, I mean you see Samsung everywhere, whether it's a mobile phone, whether it's the TVs, um, the TV behind me. Um, 
you know, there, there's there's such a massive market globally, and it all sort of ties back into this into this ETF and, and having uh, exposure to a whole range of them. So it's no wonder the um, the performance has been so strong over the over the past year and and uh, the past few years. Yeah, look, the performance has been really strong. Um, with that also comes volatility as well, and certainly over the last year, I think I think to to the end of last year. The Asia Tech Tigers had done something like 75% annual return, which is, I mean, just unheard of in terms of a, a well-diversified portfolio. And, you know, over this year, it's gotten a little bit more volatile. And there's there's certainly regulatory reasons within China, um, which is which has caused a lot of that. But um, we, we certainly see from a, a long-term thematic that investing in these companies is... Um, is really a great way to access growth going forward, but it's also diversified as well. I mean, when we when we talk about technology, it's all well and good to say online games and things like that. But I think the really interesting thing and, and some of the names you mentioned here in terms of Samsung um, and the other big holding there in terms of Taiwan Semiconductor, in terms of what they do underlying as a business, yes, they have exposure to you know consumer products, especially with Samsung, but they're actually big semiconductor businesses as well. And if we look at that from a long-term structural thematic, I mean, there's there's a global shortage in semiconductors at the moment, um, with with these two companies being massive producers in that in that area. Now, one that means they're going to be highly profitable going forward. But I mean, not to get too technical, but if interest rates then did start to rise as well, we'd see that as a little bit of a, a protectionary exposure, given um, you know semiconductors in general are seen as a reflationary product. Yeah, uh, fascinating portfolio. The, the, next, the next one that, that we want to highlight, and, and I can see there's a couple of questions that have come in through Q&A about sustainable and ESG investing. Um, it, it, is a, it is a massive um, space. It's a huge theme globally, um, particularly with, with, um, uh, among me- millennials who, who do want to I- invest in a way that is not going to impact um, the environment. It's not going to uh, impact society. It's not going to, um, you know, have a destructive outcome. Um, to, to jump into the global sustainability ETF, um, it, it's actually really interesting to see what some of the top holdings are here. Um, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not exactly companies that you would think would come to mind. Yeah, absolutely. Away. That's a really good point. And it's something um, we, we, we speak about all the time. I mean, Again, high level with respect to Ethi and, and the way we go about putting the portfolio together, essentially it's on a two screen basis. One is positive and that positive screen equates to being 60% more carbon efficient than your peers. Um, and that's inclusive of a lot of companies. And then I guess the one that you, you'd associate most with ESG investing is those negative streams. So gambling, fossil fuels, tobacco, armaments, those, those common ones are absolutely there. And if you're involved in the production of any of them, you just automatically screen out. But it gets into a very in-depth process. You know, we can screen for alcohol, uh, pornography, human rights concerns, supply chain concerns. And it just comes out that NVIDIA and Apple uh, are actually really highly ranking um, with respect to that. Um, and, and in the case of Apple, I think, you know, there's been concerns for a long period of time that, um, you know, they, they had some, some dodgy workings within their, their production facilities within Asia. It turns out that's not necessarily the case. And, and where it was 20 years ago, they've, they've really gone hard at eliminating anything that's going wrong and um, a certainly best practice in the space. Interesting to see that, that so many of the companies in, in ETHI are, are tech focused. They're, they're digital businesses, um, you know. While while some of them are, you know, selling products and hardware and and um, you know retail, you know, seeing PayPal on there, obviously one of the biggest payments businesses. Um, you know, their market cap is is you know bigger than even our biggest company here on the ASX. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, seeing the seeing the the um, the portfolio holdings. It, I mean, it's it's almost a tech portfolio, isn't it? It's certainly, I mean, th- th- there's definitely a case to say it's a tech exposure. A large part of the portfolio has um, has exposure to IT and technology. Also, pharmaceuticals as well is one in there that, um, again, is is less carbon intensive in the way that it's portrayed in the portfolio. Um, and with that, I guess the interesting thing has been, given technology has had such a strong growth profile over the last five to 10 years, it's performed really, really well too. Now, we certainly wouldn't go out and say this is going to perform all the time, but it just is really interesting to see the space where traditionally 
people have sort of accepted that they're if they're investing in ESG, they're probably going to underperform, but that's just not the case at all. Um, and certainly with some of these tech giants that um, are very, very low in terms of a carbon intensity um, point of view, doing great things for the environment, but also for um, for the world and, and for people that just want to embrace technology, live their lives easier. Yeah, well, you do see Apple, you know, the, the amount of money that they're investing in renewable energy, ensuring that all of their the, the power that they consume is, is you know, from renewable energy, um, all of their, their data centers and things, you know, the, the amount of capital that they're, that they're spending on bringing their footprint down, uh, it's no wonder that they are, they are seen as a, a sustainable, you know, an ethical sort of investment. Um, but yeah, it, it is fascinating when you, when, when I first looked at the, the top holdings there to see, um, to see what are deemed to be climate leaders or, or you know, sustainable investments, it's, um, you know, it's, it's actually quite, it's quite rewarding to see that it is some of those, you know, big household and, and big tech names um, that, that are in, that are in the portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. And look, it's probably worth noting that the the exposure itself, Ethi, is a top 200. So there's 200 companies in there that you can sort of say hand on heart or, or we can say hand on heart. There's a reason why they're in the portfolio from an ESG point of view. Um, so, I mean, that that makes us feel good, but it also just shows that there's, you know, 200 companies that you can invest in that um, that are doing, you know, the right thing by the planet. But it's also the fact that it's a rigorous screening process. So you've got 200 companies in there that, you know, from a base point of view, look good. If you then wanted to add, you know, a single security that you like that isn't in there, it also gives you the flexibility to do that. Yeah, fantastic. In your portfolio. Well, that brings us to the end of the, you know, I guess the formal part of the the webinar. Um, we we touched on we touched on uh, on cyber security and and um, you know some of the some of the risks and benefits that that. Uh, are occurring across the market at the moment. I know Hack is one of your your ETFs, which is very popular as well. Also available through through the Super Platform. Um, what what other what other sort of major themes would you see as as being sort of core to to beta shares and seeing you know a high growth you know opportunity at the yeah, moment? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, I think in terms of providers in the marketplace, we've really embraced technology. Um, so cybersecurity is a massive one. Um, robotics and artificial intelligence is another exposure that you can play through us. Um, obviously, you've got NASDAQ and Asia, which I think give a, a very different blend in terms of growth um, from a technology point of view. But then we also have you know, Australian technology, which, as you know, and we've had a conversation on Afterpay is a big part of. Um, and, and certainly that fintech space, which, which you're playing in, um, is very, very exciting from an Australian homegrown point of view. So that's another another exposure we're really big on. We, we might make it into that portfolio one day. Yeah, oh, well, we're, we're certainly hoping that you will. <laughs> um, but I mean, in terms of other thematics that we like at the moment, there's 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 so many that aren't just focused on technology. Whether that's someone that really likes food as a thematic and and, and the growing food problem around the world, there's ways to play that trade. Um, global pharmaceutical companies um, under under a drug ticker would be another exposure that, you know, given the vaccine concerns and, um, and, and finding a vaccine over the last year has been very, very popular. Um, but you could also play it from a regional point of view, whether you wanted to take an exposure into Europe or Japan. There's just many different options um, with respect to building a portfolio using ETFs as a core. Yeah. Now, just, just to jump to some of, the, um, some of the questions that we've got coming through, um, and some of them, some of them are specific to, to I guess, to beta shares and the the, the options that are available. Some, some are not. Mm -hmm. I don't have to mention one of your competitors, but but someone's asked, what is that diversified global index portfolio made up of? And and um, we did actually have have a good chat to, to beta shares about about running that portfolio. But it it is the it is the Vanguard diversified balanced portfolio. Um, so it is a it is a an index portfolio that that tracks a, a balanced uh, index. It is fifty percent defensive, fifty percent split to growth. Um, so it is a a very diversified. I think there's about five or six thousand different underlying shares um, in, in that portfolio. So that that makes up the core, and then and then you can add the the um, additional portfolios or ETFs through autopilot or direct directly into um, ETFs and shares through control account. Um, there's been a couple of questions just around how how the shares and ETFs are held uh, in Superhero Super. 
Um, so, so just to talk to that, and, and it's probably a very similar process, uh, similar setup to how an ETF is held. Um, so they are held by a custodian. Um, the, the, the way superannuation in Australia is set up is you don't have individual chess sponsored accounts. Um, you, you can have that if you, if you set up a self-managed super fund, but if you look at Australian super, AMP, IOOF, any of the, any of the major um, superannuation funds, there's a, there's a custodian that sits behind uh, and, and holds all of the assets. The, the custodian that Superhero Super uses is Citibank. So it is one of the largest global custodians. They hold billions of dollars worth of Australian superannuation monies. Um, so so it, is, it is completely separate. Superhero is not holding your cash. Uh, there's no risk to, to your superannuation assets. Um, Citigroup does hold them on your behalf. Uh, and, and OneView, which is a major um, superannuation uh, member administrator is is the member administrator for Superhero as well. So that recently got taken over by a company called Iris, multi hundred million dollar. Iris is a multi billion dollar company listed on the ASX, um, and they administer a, a huge number of of Australian superannuation funds. So so yeah. So One View is our member administrator, and Citigroup is our is our custodian for the, for the superannuation assets. We are really just the enabler. We're the platform that allows you to choose what you invest in. Um, but your investments are held by that custodian on your behalf, as as any other super fund would would have um, your assets. Uh, another question, just on insurance cover, we do have insurance um, available through the fund. It is provided by MLC Insurance. Um, there's life and TPD. At the moment, it is a set rate based on your age, up to two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. We are working on some functionality. We're working closely with MLC to enable us to to allow you to manage your, your insurance. So you'll be able to scale that up and down depending on your personal circumstances uh, and as well as turn on um, income protection insurance for those who, who uh, would, would like that. Um, talking, talking, one's come through about healthcare, Blair. Um, mm -hmm. Healthcare is obviously a, a huge topic and a huge theme at the moment given the, the global pandemic. Um, how, how would people invest in, I guess, global healthcare as a whole, but also you know, bioscience um, and, and, you know, how do, how do we get exposure to, to what's going on in the world? Yeah, look, there's, there's definitely a few different exposures. I'm probably the best first to speak about beta shares one and, and the one that comes to mind straight away there is drug, which is the uh, global healthcare exposure. So the ticker code DRUG and what that gives you exposure to is global pharmaceutical businesses, excluding Australia. Um, and, and I guess the reasoning behind there is if you wanted to buy individual names within Australia, you, you could do that with individual securities, certainly through the Superhero app. Um, but they're also, you know, from a, from a price point of view, probably a little bit more expensive than, than other pharmaceutical names around the world. Um, so companies in there look like uh, Gilead, Roche, these types of businesses. So certainly not, um, not just North American, but certainly U, uh, UK and, uh, and European held as well. Rach, yeah. Did you, did you want to jump in with with any uh, with any questions, answers? I will. I've got thoughts? a lot of questions in the Q and A here, um, so I'll, I'll go through and try to get through as many as we can. Um, the first question, John, that came through was on US shares with Super. So we've obviously launched US trading um, with with Superhero Trading, but the question there was, do we have US shares yeah. available in Superhero Super today, and do we have plans to in future? Yeah, great question. Look, getting a product like this up has been a huge amount of work. Um, having that flexibility of a self-managed super fund without actually needing that, that ATO uh, regulated structure. This is an APRA regulated um, super fund. Uh, it, has been, it has been a lot of work. Um, it's taken a lot of time and a lot of engagement with various regulators, um, public trustees, custodians, um, as well as as well as um, you know guys like Beta Shares and and uh, and the team there, so to for for launch we we launched two weeks ago. Um, we we've rolled out ASX three hundred and about one hundred and fifty ETFs, increasing the the investment uh, menu or the the available investments on the platform is is definitely something that that we are pushing for, um, but we we need to sort of you know. We, we needed to get live. Um, so at the moment, we don't have US shares available as individual investments. 
um, we we will look to add that in the future as as and when we can. Um, but I think the I think from a from a, a a risk point of view, you know, getting getting diversified exposure through the likes of NDQ, um, you know, certainly sort of covers off on that that international exposure. Uh, and whether you're looking to to go through, you know, the, the sort of the pure NDQ, or whether you're looking for a hedged version, um, you know, these are all options that that beta shares do offer. Um, as well as, and I saw there was another question just on that, you know, as well as giving you, um, you know, exposure to the downside on US shares, as well as as well as the Aussie market as well um, through through yeah. beta shares ETFs. So plenty of plenty of international options there already through ETFs, and then. You know, maybe in future offering direct US. Yeah. Um, another question just on contributions, concessional contributions. Can people make those with Superhero Super? Yeah, so so Superhero Super has been set up. So we can accept your, your and we do accept for, for a number of our members, uh, your employee contributions. So when you get paid by your employer every fortnight, month, quarterly, however frequently your superannuation contributions get paid, you can have them paid into your, superhero super account as well as making additional contributions uh, yourself so you can make a concessional and non-concessional contributions if you're self-employed you can make uh, contributions yourself uh, you can go into your wallet um, or, or the theme section of the um, of your account depending on whether you've got a control or autopilot account and there's a number of bpay um, reference numbers there uh, which are all labeled so there's ones for for personal contributions um, super guarantee contributions um, to make to make those payments. Uh, you can also go to the profile section of your account and download a, a a member a member form, and that's the that's the form that you can give to your employer. Uh, it's got your member details on it. It's also got the the um, the, the BPay details for your employer to make contributions directly into your superhero super account. Yeah, awesome. So. Just to loop back on that, for your regular employer contributions that you might get on your, your statement when you get paid by your employer, those can be all automated. Um, and you'll also get emails when you sign up for Superhero Super telling you where to go to download download that and automate that. And yeah, you, you can make additional contributions in your Superhero wallet. Just, your just, on that, just on that though, if you, if you do transfer your Super, so if you went through the process, you put in your tax file number, it came up and it said you had X amount with XYZ super fund and you chose to roll the entire balance over to superhero super. It'll actually, it'll actually do all the work for you. So it'll take your funds at your current super fund. It'll bring it over to superhero. You'll have, you'll have insurance. If it's applicable to you, you can opt out if you, if you would like um, it will, it will close your existing super fund for you. Um, if you're doing a full transfer, um, but if you if you then got paid an employer contribution to your old fund, it would yeah. reopen your account just for that small contribution, and then it would start charging you all the fees and things. You'd actually have two accounts. So it yeah. is important if you do want to transfer to Superhero Super to um, to inform your your uh, employer that that uh, they should pay your your future contributions to your new Superhero Super account. Yeah, and like you said, that form in profile has all of the details already on it for you, which is great because no one likes filling out a form. So you can just download that straight away, email it off and away it goes and it's all done for you. Um, quick question. I'm just looking through. There's one here. I might just grab on this, this one. There's yeah. One, there's one here on costs. So, mm. so costs to invest. So we, we've got our $5 flat fee brokerage. If you're in a control account, it's it's five bucks per, per trade. Um, so you can trade as much or as little as you would like. The minimum is $100, but it is that flat $5 brokerage fee. Um, when it comes to autopilot and it comes to your, your diversified index portfolio and those themed portfolios, we don't charge you $5 per, per um, contribution on each one of those. So I saw someone said if I had $100 and it was split $25 into each one, do I get charged four times? No, you don't. We actually charge 11 basis points, so point one one of a percent um, to to rebalance those portfolios. So the cost the cost doesn't become a, a major impact to your overall investments. It's a it's a very small cost to to um, to invest those monies. Yeah, on the fees too, John. Um, there's a couple of questions on exactly how it works. Um, now it can get quite complicated with different types of fees that different super funds charge. I'd say the best place to go, we've got our PDS um, and our additional information guide on the website. And those actually give you an example of 
of fees and how they're calculated. Um, you know, different percentages may seem higher or lower when you compare them to other super funds, but I just have a look at all of the fees holistically um, that you get charged in a fund because, you know, an admin fee is different to an investment fee. Um, but you can find examples on most websites um, and with Superhero Super, you can do that as well. So have a look at those guides and forms. They're on the support section of our website as well. Um, and there's some examples in there that will help you understand it a little bit more because I know it can it can get quite confusing. Just just to run through some of the fees. So we charge 0.49% of your, of your overall balance per annum. Um, and then depending on which account type you choose, whether it's an autopilot or control, we charge either one or two dollars a week. So on autopilot, it's fifty two dollars a year um, plus the 0.49 uh, administration fee. If you were to invest, if you went into, say, a control account and you were to invest in a into a into an ETF that had a, a management fee of half a percent, let's say, that is priced into that ETF. So it's not debited out of your account. We don't charge any extra fees on that. It, it, it's debited from the cost of that and worked into the cost of that investment. But maybe that's a good one for you to have a chat about just the ICR, just the management fees of the ETFs and how that works. Yeah, absolutely. Look, let's take um, our A200 example as, as just a really clear um, exposure. So a200 is the top 200 stocks within the Australian um, ASX 200. So the, the fee we charge on that is seven basis points. So uh, 0.7 of a percent. Um, and what, point, and, point and the way seven. that, sorry? 0.07 of a percent. 0.07, I should say, my apology. You priced yourself. <laughs> I have indeed, by, by a long way too. Um, so the way the way that would work is um, every every day you have the net asset value sitting on your screen as to, to what you've paid for the investment. So if that was $100, um, that will move around day to day that you've paid. Um, but it will also come off, that, that seven basis points will come off the net asset value every evening um, divided by 365. So you will never really see any meaningful difference to the net asset value. It will just come off um, over the course of a year, and um, and and there, there's no paperwork involved in trading, um, and and you 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 really for for all intents and purposes won't see any um, fee taken out of your um your your holding. It will just be done in the background. Yeah. So just to confirm there, so so the fees that you have on you know on the the management fees of ETFs, um, those are not debited from your superhero account they worked into the cost of the the underlying etf portfolio and yeah i mean i've i've traded etfs um I, I i hold a bunch of yours as well some of the ones we spoke about today um and yeah i mean you don't see it you don't you don't feel it it's, it's typically sort of priced into the the cost of the share when you when you buy it the cost of the etf when you buy it so yeah you don't get a bill for for the fee at the end of each month or or year or anything like that yeah John, a quick question on SMSFs. I've seen a few come through. Um, I guess there's two questions there. Firstly, um, can someone run their SMSF through Superhero? And then if they wanted to join Superhero Super but currently have an SMSF, how would that work? Yeah, sure. So, so a self-managed super fund is a, a super fund in its own right. So, so either you, know, you and, and, and your partner, spouse, friend, family member, uh, will be individual trustees, or you can have a, a company as your corporate trustee. So that would be your your super fund, a self managed super fund, and then you can go and set up an account uh, to to buy shares. You could you know you can sort of put whatever assets in that that um, are based on on your investment um, strategy for for your fund. Uh, what Superhero Super is is that it takes care of all of the paperwork. It takes care of all the administration, the reporting the accounting and the tax on your behalf. Uh -huh. um, and, and all you have to do is choose which investments you have. So it takes all of that headache away. Um, it, it gives you the, the, the flexibility, um, like what you get with a self-managed super fund. There are, some, there are some constraints and some limits just to ensure that people do um, you know, uh, invest responsibly. Um, but it is, it is still, you know, those limits are still quite broad and, and do give you a huge amount of flexibility to invest how you like. Um, so, so yeah, so self-managed super fund is, is a different fund to so superhero super. If you wanted to move from a self-managed super fund to superhero super, 
Absolutely you can. There's a FAQ on our website that tells you how to do it. I had a self-managed super fund. I rolled over the Superhero Super. Um, it was a very easy process and, and it's really, it's really um, you know, a huge amount of paperwork that's been lifted off my shoulders uh, to yeah. enable, you know, enabling us to do that. Uh, in terms of can you use your self-managed super fund uh, to invest on Superhero, we do have, we do have um, functionality coming. Uh, we've been working a lot in, in the background to enable companies, trusts and self-managed super funds to onboard onto Superhero. And the reason why we haven't launched it yet is because we want it to be completely digital, completely paperless. And um, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of um, companies, platforms in the market that have made that entirely uh, paperless and, and a frictionless process. Yeah. Uh, we're very close. Um, so so in in the short term, you will you will be able to to bring those other entity types on superhero um, to have alongside whether you've got a super, uh, superhero super account or an individual trading account, you'll be able to have those other entity types as well. Yeah, that's great. Um, I love that you mentioned the completely digital and paperless element of it, John. My favorite thing about joining Super, Superhero Super was when you go through onboarding, you don't have to go to your old super fund, figure out your member number, find your password, log in, try and look at how to get out. You just literally go to Superhero Super, put in your tax file number. It pulls up whatever super you have and you can roll over as easily as that, which just takes out all of the headache um, around, you know, before that I would have logged into my super maybe once a year, if that. So I had no idea, um, you know, of all of that info, but I think having it completely digital is, is such a great element of the platform. Um, also, yeah, on tax, John, I know you mentioned this, but just to confirm, I guess the tax around superhero super, how that's done, yeah. um, do people have to do it themselves or is it all completely integrated into the platform? Yeah, sure. So when so when you get paid a contribution from your employer um, under the government legislation, uh, contribution tax is deducted. So so you don't pay tax on that money in your own name. It goes into your super fund, and you get you get charged fifteen percent tax instead of your marginal rate. So that fifteen percent contribution tax rate is debited by the member administrator when your your cash comes in. We we detail that out into in your activity section. So if you got paid a thousand dollar contribution. You would, you would see that there's $850 has been split based on your, your contribution settings and $150 has been debited for, for tax. Um, in, terms of, in terms of then investing, in, in, in terms of um, creating uh, income or capital gains off your investments, um, the, the standard super tax rates apply. So it's 15% tax on, on income and capital gains. If you have held your assets for longer than for longer than 12 months, you do get a 33% discount on cap on CGT. So it's 10% instead of 15% on, on uh, the capital gains. So what happens with that tax is it, it is held in a, in a separate account and it is debited um, typically every quarter. So cap contribution tax is debited at the time you get paid a contribution. Um, all of your other income and, and CGT tax is debited uh, quarterly and, and is, is um, paid to the ATO annually on your behalf. So yeah. you don't have to do a tax return for your superhero super account. That is done at the sort of the master fund level by the trustee of the fund. Just mm -hmm. like if you had a, an industry or retail super fund, um, you're not doing a tax return every year for that. We do yeah. send you a member statement every year. So you will get a, you will get a holding statement um, showing you how much contribution tax you've been charged, you know, all of the contributions, all the details that you'd typically see. Um, and I know a number of people, you know, certainly that I know, usually take that member statement and either don't even open it or just sort of, you know, don't even look at it. Uh, it will be yeah. available through the platform. You will have the full activity displayed to you throughout the year as well. So it's a lot more engaging um, to, to um, you know, I guess, manage your super. Through yeah, that. and I think that, thanks for that answer, John. And I think that's just it, right? Beforehand, you know, a lot of people, they wouldn't even look at those statements or, or look at what their super balance even is. But that's what we're trying to change really and, and giving people that full transparency over what they're invested in, the choice. Um, and great that you don't have to do a tax return individually for your super. Um, we might finish it on this question, just a quick one, um, and, then, and then we'll let everyone go back to their day. But just a question, can people also invest in real estate investment trusts and listed investment companies through Superhero Super? Yeah, absolutely. So any, any of the companies that are included in the ASX 300 index, 
are available. Um, there's, a, there's about 150, as I mentioned, there's about 150 different ETFs that spans a whole range of different asset classes. Um, but there are a number of companies in the ASX 300 that are uh, real estate investment trusts. So you can get exposure to, to all asset classes uh, through, yeah. the, through the super platform. Yeah, awesome. And I just saw one last question there about partial rollovers. You can do partial rollovers with Superhero Super. So during the onboarding process, um, you can actually see all of your super there and you can choose to either do a full or partial ro rollover at that point. Um, so just to answer that, yes, to that question. Um, I think we are bang on nearly 1.30 now. Um, so thank you so much, John and Blair. Um, super insightful on all things Superhero Super and, and Vita Shares as well. Um, yeah, just we're very excited um, to have finally launched Superhero Super and we hope that that you all enjoy the platform. Um, if you do ever need any support, we have live chat support. So just pop onto our website um, and the guys will be able to help you with any specific questions that you have during onboarding um, or anything about the product as well. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Yeah, thanks very much, Blair. And thank you everyone. And of course, thanks Rach for, for uh, co-hosting with us. And thank you both for having us. It's, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. All right. Thanks all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.